Good morning. I am Renisha Graham. I'm better known as Precious the Mime. And I have been miming for 21 years. I started at age 16 in the year of 2000. I am so happy to be here. It has been a um, tremendous blessing to continue to mime, um, especially in today's time and with the pandemic. I've ministered at so many funerals um, this past year and this year, so I count it as a blessing, thanking God that I'm yet alive, I'm still here, and that you're still here because you're watching me. So um, what we're gonna do is speak a little bit about miming and how it correlates in the Bible. Um, probably many preachers or um, leaders will ask you, why do you minister, why do you mime? Um, how is it related in the Bible? Um, those are some common questions. Well, in the Bible, it does not say mime. It does not literally say the word mime. And remind, remember, miming is a form of sign language and illustration. And throughout the entire Bible, there's a lot of scriptures that are, that are illustrated or showing signs of miming through illustration. So we'll jump, jump right in. Mom is drama. Did you know that mom is drama? Mom, drama, dance, and movement were all used in the delivery of the word of God. The, vocab the vocabulary of movements were used to be incorporated into the expressions of the word of the Lord. The study of mom, as far as ministering, because we do not perform with great movements, begin with the basics of ballet because of the techniques that need to be strongly interpreted with certain movements. And certain words require strong movements that will allow you to experience the freedom of flow in the interpretation. Yes, it starts out with ballet. Having the facial expressions is vital to expressing of what you want to interpret. So whatever you're trying to interpret, it, it heavily relies on your facial expression. So facial expressions matters in miming. Act out without words, but with gestures and bodily movements only. So miming deals with you not speaking, but acting out whatever you're trying to interpret with your body and with your facial expressions. The book of Psalms, which is my favorite, is an act of the scriptures by interpreting with hands, gestures, and body movements. There are many examples in the Holy Bible that was caused for acting out, dramatized, body movements, and gestures without saying a mumbling word. Examples are the great army, the woman with the issue of blood is a good one, Zechariah, Judas betraying Jesus, and so many more. Mime. The Old Testament Ezekiel was a prophet that was called to announce God's judgment on Israel and other nations to proclaim restoration for God's people. His preaching was not well received by the Jews who were with him in captivity. Chapter 3. So God gave Ezekiel many methods, illustrations, and demonstrations to help get the message across to the Jews. That's chapters 4 and 5. Ezekiel actually acted out most of the methods with gestures and did illustrations for Israel for them to understand. Israel later became restored again and God renewed the temple and a new Jerusalem, chapter 40. Ministering mom is interpreting, using illustrations, and nonverbal methods to allow the congregation to understand what you're doing just like Ezekiel demonstrated in the Old Testament. Gestures and scriptures we're going to go to. So I do have my Bible and I have the student Bible. So you can see, we're just going to go through a few. Um, it speaks about the removal of the sandal in Ruth 8. So we're going to go to Ruth and Ruth is in the uh, Old Testament. So we'll go there and I already have it highlighted because I wanted to read and look. All right, so Ruth, it speaks about, so when the next of kin said to Boaz, acquire it for yourself, he took off his sandal. 
So, if your pastor was preaching that um, scripture or in the book of Ruth, and he was on that scripture and he said, so when the next of kin said to Boaz, acquire it for yourself, he took off his sandal. You can demonstrate or illustrate someone taking off their sandal without literally taking off your sandal. So that is an uh, example. Shook out of my lap is Nehemiah 5 and 13. Put in foot to neck, Joshua 10, 24. Shaking of hands, Proverbs 6 and 1. I hurled my shoe, Psalms 108 and 9. Wink, shuffle, point, Proverbs 6 and 13. Visible evidence of sorrow, Isaiah 15, 2 and 3. Shake the dust off my feet, Luke 9 and 5. And gestures for silence, Acts 21, 40. So when you want someone to be quiet, your first gesture would be, that's a mime. That's a mime right there. All right, moving on. We're going to go over some commonly asked questions when it comes to miming. Why the white face? Where did you get the white face from? Why do moms wear white paint? Can you be a mom without the white face? Dancers do not wear a white face. A mom wear a white face because it brings out the facial expressions a little bit more if you did not have it on. So to answer that question, the white makeup helps to make the mom's facial expression more noticeable and it creates a more neutral character that is easier for everyone to identify. The effect of the makeup is to magnify the facial expressions, conveying them to a larger audience. It also acts as a kind of mask, allowing the mom to play different characters and allowing the audience easier identification with the mom. Is it all right for moms to talk? Strictly speaking, mom is silent, but some moms feel that dialogue enhances their performance or ministering and allows greater range of communication. Most moms today feel that mom can use words, but must communicate primarily in movement to be considered a mom. What is the difference between mom and dance? Mom is like dance in that it uses movements. However, dancers evoke feeling with movements that are abstractly related to the thing and mom communicate with movements that are more literally related to the thing. Furthermore, the style of movement in dance and mime are different. Dancers leap through the air and attempt to achieve a weightlessness mime stay rooted on the stage. Dancers move to a consistent rhythm. Mom employs broken rhythms and stillness. What is the difference between mime and acting? Mime is like acting because it portrays characters and stories. Actors rely on dialogue and costuming to create a character. Moms rely on body positioning, movement, and rhythm to do the same. Actors communicate emotions in a natural fashion, where moms does so in a stylized or symbolic fashion. An actor will tell another, I love you in a heartfelt voice, where a mom will put their hand over their heart and that will demonstrate or illustrate that they love you or they can go here without saying a word. That is the difference. The mom attempts to find the truth of the human condition and his characters may fail or succeed. All right. He also attempts to identify with forces, the elements, and all things animated or inanimated. So, the difference between a mom and a clown, most people who do not know who, are, who is at an event, and if you have a white face on, they can mistake, mistake you as a clown. And the difference between a mom and a clown is that clowns succeed to fail. So, they want to bring humor to individuals, to the audience. They want them to laugh so... They can do what they're trying to do, the act that they're trying to do, but the goal is to fail at it so they can get laughter. Whereas a mom, we 
we are more serious in trying to uh, get a message over, especially in the church, okay, in Christian miming. So those are some common questions, and we can go in detail um, when you all come back in June to ask questions. A little bit about <clears throat> some key points about um, being a great mom. I will go over those as well, but I want to speak to you about some things that I came up with about mime and face painting, okay? A mime practice an art form that is not always readily accepted by the public. Some consider them annoying as one of their talents include mocking the actions of others. Some people see them as just plain creepy because they don't speak and the faces are usually painted white. Others appreciate the art, talent, or gift, which is from God, and work that go into becoming an experienced mind. Minds minister as in a pretend world, which is in the coverance of God, where sound is out of place, only an interpretation of their performance, which is when you minister, is acceptable. There is a saying that goes, if you want to get someone's attention, whisper. Because a mom takes it one step further with no sound at all. Silence is a peaceful way. Often this makes the solemn expression intimidating, interesting, and engaging. Although they may seem similar, mom face painting is not to be confused with that of a clown. Clown faces vary more in appearance and usually include a big red nose and furry, crazily styled wigs. Some clowns do, however, perform in silence. Mimes have been used in Christian ministry, adding zest to theater acts and plays to further instill Christian values in a captivating way. Throughout the Bible, gestures were used, which is a form of miming. Although not everyone appreciates mimes, some are still traditional, they have to work to perfect their performance, which is their ministry. We should all strive for perfectness. It takes skill to be able to get a story across to the public without using voice. A deaf, mute person is forced to learn to mind to help them communicate effectively with others. This, however, is not an act, but a way of life. There is no costume or face painting. A mother has to learn to mind, which is sign language, another form of miming, to her children when she loses her voice. It can be quite challenging and frustrating to be unable to communicate. Perhaps if she put on the white mind face, the anointing, she could gain and keep their attention easier. A mind is a silent actor or actress, as the case may be. There are minds that travel all over the world who live and perform in many parts of the country. They perform live in theaters, travel to entertain school children, perform in hospitals as well. So that was just a little bit about the background of miming and how some people can mistakenly mistake a mime for a clown, okay? I'm gonna go on to some key points of becoming a great mime dancer because you have to go into the Bible first to make sure that you are truly understanding the word of God, okay? Number one, you must be born again. Go to Romans 10 and 9 through 13, and then you will jump over to John 3, 16. Number two, you must pray. Seek God and ask him if this is where he wants you to be, and that will be in Colossians 1, 9 through 10. Number three, we spoke about it, humility. Recognize that the gifts and talents that we operate are from God, Okay. We are who we are because of who Christ is. Wear humility as a garment. Be clothed in the spirit of humility. And that is in James 1 and 17 and Romans 12 and 3. Number four, anointing. Christ in you, his power, his 
his authority. It is the anointing that will destroy yokes and remove burdens. Isaiah 10 and 27. Number five, ministry. Are you dancing to be seen of men or for the glory of God? That's 1 Peter 4, 10 through 11. Number six, study the word. Study the word. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2 and 15, when you know the word, all else will fall in place. Number seven, fearless. For God had not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. That's 2 Timothy 1 and 7. And number eight, dedicated and committed. A commitment is a pledge to do something. When you become part of a mind ministry, you commit to be at rehearsal, at church, and at Sunday school. You also commit to show up each time you are scheduled to minister. You commit to pray for the leader, yourself, and the ministry on a daily basis. Number eight is very important. It is very important because it'll be times that you um, <clears throat> probably don't want to show up. Or you had a hard day at school, whatever age you are, a hard day at work. Um, and you have practice that evening, you don't want to go. So, number eight is, probably should be number one, dedicated and committed. Going on to number nine, investment. Giving is a part of ministry. You'll be asked to give, you'll be asked to pay for your garments, shoes, and other materials needed to enhance your ministry. Number 10, consistency. Con <coughs> Excuse me. Consistency. Consistency is a key word in life of a mind. You must be consistent in the three powerful P's, and that is prayer, praise, and practice. Consistency brings results every time. Consistency, consistent prayer brings power. Consistent praise brings peace. And I will say that again. Consistent prayer brings power. Consistent praise brings peace. And consistent practice brings brings perfection. Perfect, pra perfect practice makes perfect praise. Remember Daniel in the, in the sixth chapter when he learned that he consistently prayed to God three times a day. He did not alter his schedule, established a set time for prayer, praise, and practice. And number 11, confidence. Know that self-confidence is ineffective our confidence must lie in the hands and direction of God. We can do nothing without God. And that's John 15 and 5. Number 12, be a leader. If God has set you in charge to lead others in praise and worship through miming, don't allow the followers to lead. Suggestions are great, but don't accept them all because the, the mind will begin to doubt your leadership. This will cause the vision and the body of Christ must be unified. Those were some, um, some scriptures that I found and I feel as if they are um, key points for a blessed mind ministry. And I have one more, one more thing I'm going to go over with you all. And it is on, <clears throat> excuse me, mind leaders, all right? Miming is one of the biblical ways of praising God, all right? The same as dancing, miming is one of the biblical ways of praising God. It is a physical expression of our joy and gladness in praise. It's given our totality in praise. It is a sign of surrendering to the Lord. It shows that we appreciate the body he gave to us. If you can give your body to God in praise, he would not allow the devil to afflict that same body with sickness and diseases. So you give it to him over and over again. Any kind of mind, is it acceptable to God? Hmm, something to think about. However, in order to be a mind that God wants you to be, you must understand and experience a oneness with him one-on-one. -on -one. 
You must understand what it means to worship the Lord. Whether it's with dancing, miming, singing, thinking, and praying, you must be able to enter into the sanctuary with God. Mime dancing without worship is ineffective. Movements without worship are simply movements. There are a lot of talent dancers, but how many truly have a personal relationship with God? If you are the choreographer or leader of a worship mime group, a choreographer is one who creates, arranges, or directs dances. Your role is even more important in edifying the body of Christ. You should first, you should first pose all the qualities of a spiritual leader in order to lead. Being gifted choreographer is simply not enough. An experienced choreographer can create a dance piece in minutes, but the religious choreographer that has a message to convey will be more effective. Your message will be carried out as God has instructed you to do. Your message will be carried out as God, your message will be carried out as God has instructed you to do. Growing your ministry is equally as important. As in any Christian ministry, moving to the next level should be the goal of every person in your ministry. So those are some of the, the um, <clears throat> that is some of the information that I have for you. And I look forward to seeing each and every one of you in June. Um, it will be Zoom. So you will be getting that information soon. Thank you for taking the time to listen to Precious the Mom as I give you a little background of what where mom came from and what mom is about biblically. Thank you. See you soon.